This is Greg Troutwine. I'm the editor and associate publisher of Maritime Reporter and Engineering News. We're here at the SMM 2016 with Mr. Timo Kopanen of Wartzilla. Mr. Kopanen, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Kopanen, just to start off, could you just give us your name, your title, and your area of responsibility? Sure. My name is Timo Kopanen, and I'm uh, Vice President of uh, Flow and Gas uh, uh, Solutions within Marzilla Marine, Marine Solutions. Okay, excellent. Now, obviously, Mr. Kopanen, Wartzilla is a very large, well-known player in this marine market. But can you explain, if you will, Wartzilla's role in the entire gas value chain? Sure. It's uh, actually, our role has been evolving over the years a bit. Uh, of course, we, we are well-known by, by our engines and fuel fuel technology and all the fuel systems around it. But uh, since uh, Hammerworth acquisition some five years back, we actually entered the whole gas value chain, uh, having a technology from initial liquefaction, reliquefaction of boiler gases, uh, receiving a terminal uh, regasification technology. So we are generally playing in the whole, whole area of value chain. Okay, excellent. Well, and again, from my perspective, I've been doing this for 24 years. so. And we've been talking for a long time about gas as fuel. And as we discussed briefly, you know, there's always a chicken and an egg uh, type of philosophy in when it will become more of a reality. But from your perspective, and I think you have a great perspective, will you put in perspective for us where we're at today? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good question and, and a little bit annoying question, actually, because we, uh, the development, to be honest with you, should have been uh, more more fast. I mean, we, we have been, as you as you just pointed out, uh, talking about gas coming and mm -hmm. coming year after year, and still only fractional ships are running on gas. And um, uh, there are many aspects on this. Uh, we need to tackle them one by one, and and we cannot as, as a single supplier so solve all of them. But we are we can definitely uh, contribute in, in in solving them. One, of course, that concerns us is that we, we need to make sure also from the gas value chain point of view that the gas is available for you, uh, to be used in, in, as a marine fuel. And then, of course, from the technology point of view, we need to have uh, top-of-the-edge uh, technologies from the engine side, from the fuel gas handling side, and, and then, then we can enable uh, gas uh, spreading wider. Well, you know, I'm sure uh, an argument that you've heard and rebutted many times is the additional cost. Uh, for the record, could you discuss the cost difference between a dual fuel system and a traditional system? Uh, I cannot give you the exact uh, amount. What, what, how much more will it cost to, to have a HFO-driven engine or compared to the uh, LNG-driven engine? But uh, uh, if, I, if I try to break it into pieces a bit, uh, from the engine point of view, uh, the difference is not massive. It's the same base engine uh, which is running HFO than, than, than it is running dual fuel. Of course, there are a few differences because of the different fuel and fuel, uh, fuel uh, systems in, at the engine as such. The, where the major difference comes is then the surrounding, uh, the fuel gas handling system, as we call it. There, there's an evaporator, uh, a gas valve unit, uh, and, and especially a tank. And, and for sure, that, that is more expensive, but uh, that, uh, there's a reason why it's more expensive. Well, again, Mr. Kopanen, I very much appreciate your time. It's a busy show, and we appreciate you coming by. Thanks. Thanks a lot.